Alrighty, how's it going guys? We're gonna do another video. I finally remembered to turn the light on for goodness sake. Do I look pretty good? I hope I look good. I work really hard at looking good. I cut the hair off of my head and you know, tried to get my lights going so everything hopefully is looking really good. Alright, what am I talking about? We're gonna make a video right now. We're gonna talk about RPG Maker in the context of Android. Now this was probably one of the most heavily requested topics I've ever made a video about on this channel so I'm hoping that it's very successful and actually while I was originally intending to make one video this is actually going to turn into three videos here we're going to do three videos the first video is going to cover how to set up the game when you're making the game the second video is going to cover how to deploy the game and the third video is going to talk about dealing with Android Studio okay a lot of this stuff will work just as well if you're setting up your game for iOS. I may make an iOS video in the future. There's a lot of good ones out there, so I don't know if that's as necessary. I'm more focusing on Android, but the first two videos definitely will help a lot with your iOS setup as well. And this video in particular, more than any of the three videos in this series, will help a lot with your Android and iOS. So if you're going to do both or either, this is really a great video for you if you're using RPG Maker MV or MZ. Either one, it's pretty much the same process for both. So I'm really excited to do this video for you finally, and I'm hoping I get a bajillion views on it, and it's really worth it because it's a lot of freaking work. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. I'm a really small YouTuber. I'm hoping to hit the 300 subscriber mark by this week, by this weekend, by, this, by today, really. Probably I have 10 more to go, so probably by today. So I'm hoping that that's gonna happen today, and I'm really, I'm really pumped. I'm really excited about that. So let's make it happen, guys. Hit that subscribe button. And with no further ado, here are... <music> 10 Essential Tips for Mobile RPG Maker Projects. Number one, OpenGL is a different beast on mobile than it is on desktop. OpenGL is uh, the rendering engine. It's uh, combined with Pixie, it's how your graphics display on your RPG Maker project and for the majority of the stuff, you know, just in general, like on the web and stuff, OpenGL is, it's everywhere. But anyway, there are multiple versions of OpenGL and the version that your mobile phone uses, whether it's iOS or Android, is different than the one that's on your desktop, whether it's Mac or Windows. So that's important to know because Small devices, portable devices render things differently. So a lot of the things that work really well on your desktop computer will work really terribly or not work at all on your mobile device. So going in, this is really something you want to look for. And I'm going to talk about some of the particulars of these as we get through the video. But just right now, I want you to know that the way things render, it's quite a bit different. Number two, you're going to need touch controls. The touch controls on RPG Maker's base projects are sh not great all right they're not good don't use them nobody likes them that's not the way games are supposed to work that click to move stuff is for boomers don't use it create a proper touchscreen controller this for me was one of the most extensive projects in my project it took me tons of time to do so it's going to take some time so just be ready to invest in a proper controller i hope that whatever you figure out it works well I would make a plugin to do this, but it's a little bit hard to support, so I'm not going to do that. But I really hope you guys can do well, and the best of luck with your touchscreen controller. For many of you, this will be a game breaker, and this will be the thing that makes it so your project is not viable. Number three, 10 animations and 10 fates don't play well with mobile RPG Maker games. So if you have a tent that changes, say for example, over 60 frames, every single one of those frames is gonna slow down the game. Now, if you do it over one frame, it's enough to where your system can usually recover from the lag. But if you do it over 60, you might have a situation where your game uh, will either crash or it'll lag for minutes, if not even like tens of minutes to an hour, just for a 60 frame, one second little tent transition. Uh, because the way it works, it's exponentially worse the longer that animation goes on. So, I would warn you, don't use any 10 animations in your game, period. Now, this is important because the stock battle or death in RPG Maker uses tents, and many of the stock abilities use tents. So, be very weary with those. I personally dealt with this by creating a plugin that kind of just got rid of them and took them out of the core. You can deal with it however you want to do. You can change the way death works. You can create a dedicated death 
frame. Whatever you do, don't do the boss death on mobile. That thing will break your game, okay? So just avoid that at all freaking cost. Please don't do that. Number four, smaller games are much easier to deploy. By default, RPG Maker games are about 1.11 gigabytes. If you deploy them straight out of building like a fresh project, I would say you gotta really gut that. And then also in addition to that, compress those images. Um, if you get the picture, you gotta go and compress the pictures. So go get all those files, either erase them or compress them. I use TinyPNG, it's a free website where you can do up to 20 images at a time. Uh, they also have a desktop version if you want to do it to more images than that in one sitting. Also, if you do compress the images, make sure you have a backup because those compressed images, well, they're designed by AI to not visually affect the fidelity of the photo from our human eyes. They sometimes will make things look worse. So you have to use your own eyes and look at the images and see if the fidelity is worth the image size reduction. And most times it'll be okay, but every once in a while I come across something where I'm like, okay, that kind of ruined the photo, so I'm not gonna use that anymore. Number five, files in your code are case sensitive. So if you're like me, you use a lot of script calls, a lot of custom plugins, just to make extra sure that all those plugins have the right case sensitivity when they're calling on assets, whether those be pictures or sounds or whatever, case sensitivity is very important. Capitalization is very important in your code for RPG Maker MVMZ when in the context of a mobile project. It is not, however, relevant at all for desktop projects. The desktop rendering system will find the image and it'll choose the one and prioritize the one that has closer case sensitivity to what you are looking for in its own way. But mobile, mobile won't be bothered. Mobile ain't got time for that. So just make sure in your code that you're very weary of case sensitive file names and case sensitive resources because RPG Maker's mobile deployment is much more strict. This is something that would be good to have on desktop anyway, but you know, it's, will break your game on mobile. I, in general, tend to make all of my assets just lowercase across the board and not capitalize anything. That, for me, has been a decent way to kind of offset the possibility that I'll accidentally mess up with something as trivial as capitalization. So watch out for that. Watch out for capital assets. Watch out for lowercase assets. Everything is case sensitive. Number six. Number six, watch out for image size. And by image size, I mean the actual resolution of the image, not the file size. Images in RPG Maker for mobile deployments cannot be either 2,000 pixels tall or 2,000 pixels wide. Either one will break your game, and both will definitely break your game. So all of your assets have to be broken up into usable sections that are smaller than that. The image will not render. Many plugins rely on huge images, so those plugins will not work and you have to either find a way to edit the plugin or just find some workaround. Me, for example, I found issues with this primarily in my icons file because the icons file can be pretty big because it holds like thousands of icons. And I also found an issue with this in many of my battler sprites, my enemy sprites. Some of the bosses are really big and would go just over the minimum size of 2000 pixels wide. So I had to go ahead and find a different way to implement those animations that I wanted. I ended up using a skeletal animation system called Dragon Bones, which uh, we could talk more about. If you want me to make a video about that, let me know in the comments. Uh, skeletal animation is really useful and you can get a lot of smoother animations than come kind of stock out of RPG Maker. And it's also just much more optimized. You can have a much smaller file size and do a lot more with a lot less, which is a great plus for the mobile games. Just make sure you watch out for your image resolution. It's ironic because the file size is irrelevant. So, you know, you don't really, you don't need to worry about that, but you do need very much to worry about the actual resolution of the image. Number seven, watch out for plugins. Many plugins that work in RPG Maker on desktop do not work on mobile. And this is just a reality. Uh, if you're not a programmer, my general advice is just to maybe not use plugins as much as possible. If you are a decent programmer, you can use the plugins, but make sure you understand what the heck is going on under the hood. Make sure you understand the engineering of those plugins. People often come to my game and they're surprised that I use so many plugins and that my game is not like a big dumpster fire that constantly is crashing. And the reason for that is because I understand for the most part what is going on inside of my plugins. Whether I made that code myself, had somebody help me with it, or if I just got it off of an open source set up on the internet. You know, 
I do kind of have a grip on the general idea of what the plugin is doing, and that allows me to not break it. And I can also foresee problems. It's very common for me to either edit plugins if it's okay with the developer, or create an add-on plugin that will kind of fix the issues that that plugin would have normally by itself. But in general, if you're kind of more of a beginner, I would say just try to avoid using plugins because, you know, with great power comes great responsibility and the plugins are very powerful. And if you're not really ready to shoulder that responsibility, maybe just don't use them. Number eight, there's no dev tools in your mobile testing. Again, there are no dev tools in your mobile testing. If you don't know what dev tools are, if you push F8 when you test your game, it'll pop up the developer console. Now what this thing does is it helps you. It helps you find bugs. It helps you see what your variables, what your objects, what everything in the game is doing. You can call on functions. You can call on switches. You can call on strings and booleans and yada, yada, yada. You can find out what's happening in your game. Now, you cannot use this tool while testing on mobile. So often, if your mobile game crashes, you will have no idea what in the actual flip is going on with your game. And because of that, it's much harder to diagnose issues. So you will be able to diagnose the issues while testing the game on your desktop, but then when you translate it over to mobile, if there's an issue, the only things you can really look at are when and how the crash happened. So you can look at when it happened and see what's going on and go look at that part of your game and find out what happened, but you can't see the specific information about the crash. On occasion, there will be a screen that shows what particular asset is missing or if something is undefined, but you still have way less resources to debug in mobile. So just be prepared to put in extra hours debugging your game because it's gonna come up with things that you are not gonna have an easy time finding. And it would not be absurd or out of the question for me to eliminate an entire scene because I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it in the past. That's something I've definitely done. So be prepared to make big sacrifices in order to get your mobile game to work. Number nine, getting on the Google Play Store is complex and getting on the iOS App Store is even worse. So just be prepared. Those things are going to take a lot of time and they're going to make you jump through a lot of hoops and they're going to make you use a lot of formats that you wouldn't use otherwise and it's just going to be a mess. So just be prepared for that because I don't know if you're prepared. I don't know if you're prepared because it's going to be hard. So I don't know. I'm looking at you right now. You might not be prepared. Are you prepared? Because it's a lot of work getting that app on there. This is the 10th and final thing I want to say. The Google and iOS APIs for Android and iOS devices in regards to RPG Maker specifically, are non-existent. The community is not engaged with this topic whatsoever. So you will have to go outside of the RPG Maker community at the time of this video. Maybe after I made this, people made some stuff, but right now there's like nothing. So if you wanna learn how to do advertising or cloud saves or achievements, you're gonna to have to have some vast programming knowledge. All of those things that we kind of take for granted uh, in other engines, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing for you here. There are advantages to RPG Maker, and I love RPG Maker, but the open source stuff is not out there. So what will really work well is if you want to do an offline game that uh, requires no kind of interaction with any kind of API, that's probably where RPG Maker shines the most. But if you want to do those type of functionalities, just be prepared to either hire somebody or do a lot of work and research on how to figure it out. All right. <laughs>cow this was a video and a half man i'm tired this was a lot anyway i hope that this helps you a lot when you're setting up your project again i'm going to make another video probably uh tomorrow or the day after about how to actually do the export that one is going to be more of a tutorial and i'm going to talk about apks and aab file structure so look forward to that uh that's going to be essential but i think this video in many ways is more important because this is the foundation that'll set you up for the entire project all of these things I'm talking about took me a long time to figure out and nobody else is talking about them on YouTube that I've seen. I haven't even seen it really in blogs. So a lot of this information is kind of new to an extent and it'll help you figure out if you even really want to make an RPG Maker project. You might not want to. You might want to just stick to desktop or maybe even move to a different engine. You know, I love RPG Maker. I think it's wonderful. But, you know, be open to different possibilities in your game dev journey. I do want to say that... Uh, my last video did very well. So far I've got a lot of views. I have one video that I made in like a half an hour that's like my most viewed video. So if you want to check that one out, I'll put the link up here. Um, 
And that one is about my menu UI, which I'll probably make another video about later because I've updated it quite a bit since I made that video. But everything's going good on YouTube. Uh, lots of subs been happening. I've been streaming on my other channel directly. So if you don't want to go ahead and watch me on Twitch, you can follow my other YouTube channel. And that's my streaming channel where I do all my streaming. And, you know, it's going pretty well. I I've been enjoying it. I've been dual uh, streaming on Twitch and YouTube at the same time, which is technically against the rules. But we'll f see if they catch me. If anything, I'll get kicked out of the Twitch affiliate program. And then it's like, whatever. You know, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't get a lot of subs these days anyway. And uh, I just am doing it more for exposure at the end of the day. So it works more for me. You know, if you disagree with that, if you think I'm a bad guy, maybe drop me a dislike or whatever. Anyway, while we're talking about likes, make sure you like this video. Uh, leave any comments if you have anything to add to this topic. If you have any things that you've had issues with and trying to deploy for mobile or any things that you want to do in your mobile games, I, I want to hear about it. I want to talk about it. This is where I want to talk about that stuff. Furthermore, I really appreciate a lot of you joining up in the Discord. It's been great getting a lot of new people in there, a lot of new conversations, been really enjoying uh, meeting and talking to a lot of you. I've been really meeting some really amazing developers over the last couple weeks and I'm, I'm just really pumped about it. It's just really cool. I want to keep making videos. I don't know if I'll be able to do much more than one or two a, a week, but I want to keep doing it. And if you want to help me keep doing it, make sure you sub and share this video and comment and whatever, because it makes a huge difference on how visible the video is. You know, I think that's just about all I have to say now. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I'm going to hit it, hit it. I'm going to hit the road, I'm gonna hit the road now. going to get out of here. going to say bye bye. Bye bye bye. Um, aloha, as we say here in the beautiful state of Hawaii. Uh, I'll see you later. Uh, thank you for watching the video. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out like a trout. I'm out like a like a mahi mahi. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you later. Check it out. Okay. Goodbye. Bye bye bye. Bye bye bye. Bye bye.